Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Insights, a show where we deep dive into cloud native technologies. And today we have with us once again, Jeff Morris, VP of Product and Solutions Marketing at Couchbase. Jeff, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks again, Swap. Great to see you. Today we are uh, covering two stories. One is Couchbase survey, and second one is the availability of Couchbase Cloud on Microsoft Azure. Let's just start with the survey. First of all, can you tell me how often do you uh, conduct these surveys and how often do you release these reports? So we conduct these uh, surveys of uh, CIOs, basically. Uh, we've been doing this for about four years. Um, and we typically conduct the uh, the surveys in September, October, and then release our results around now. So what are the some of the highlights of this survey, especially if we have gone through a pandemic and uh, the companies have accelerated their you know, digital transformation journey, which they are hitting a lot of roadblocks that they did not expect in the hype cycle of cloud native technology. So talk about what were your findings? Yeah. Well, the findings that we're, we're seeing right now is uh, yes, indeed, the uh, the pandemic is driving the importance of, um, uh, of digital transformation. And we've seen that not only through our own survey, but through a number of other uh, uh, discussions we've had with uh, uh, with the folks in the market. Um, so the the need to react very quickly to the decentralization of users is really one of the drivers of uh, um, uh, of of what is focusing IT organizations right now, and therefore that's making the importance of uh, software development teams all that much more important actually, and uh, they're uh, they're becoming a, a, a an even more critical cog in the uh, in an organization, um, and then the other interesting things that we've started to see about that is when we talk about, uh, okay, those development teams are very important. Um, what about, you know, their motivation and things like that? I think there's really some interesting findings there as well. We have also, we are also seeing a, a kind of trend uh, where uh, the importance of SREs or site reliability engineers, that is also growing and it's kind of seen as an evolution uh, because yes, you can get your software up and running, but you know, business continuity relies on, you know, that software running reliably. So have you seen any such concerns from organization or you see a trend in that direction as well in the survey? Well, in, in both in the survey and then maybe just the nature of Couchbase itself, uh, where we've built in a lot of those uh, reliability and operational controls um, into the software itself that, uh, you know, yes, they, that's kind of always a, uh, a core consideration when an organization decides to adopt or move one of their applications. I think what's, yeah, it, it, but you're, to your point earlier also, though, is the motivation to take an, uh, an aging application and try to improve its, its, its performance or try to improve its availability or to lower or its operating cost, oftentimes moving them from on-prem to cloud, that's uh, uh, getting more and more popular right now as well. And that same reliability concern uh, holds up. So are we seeing a, a lot of lift and shift or when the companies, they do embark on their digital transfer, of course, they, it has been going on for a while, but this pandemic has kind of accelerated it. So when they do kind of embark on their digital transformation or cloud native journey, what are some of the challenges that these developers face uh, when they are bringing their legacy applications and moving to the cloud? Well, there's there's some core drivers that I think they, uh, that are part of their challenge. One is their user behaviors have changed you know, pretty dramatically. Um, you know, we, we characterize it as, as decentralization. Uh, oftentimes we also call it uh, the, uh, the touchless society where curbside pickup and uh, you know delivery of everything are really uh, uh, taking hold in within industries that we hadn't really anticipated earlier so that user behavior is forcing that you know not a typical lift and shift but it's a you know it's a refactor and and shift into the cloud kind of um, uh, kind of direction and as they do that they've got to take on considerations like I need to know. I need to, you know, have a very, very personal experience for every one of my users. I need to remember that, you know, Jeff likes to buy eggs on Wednesday, kind of thing, um, uh, uh, from the supermarket, and, uh, and 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 catalog that. So uh, the need for, you know, the flexibility of a uh, a dynamic schema like what a JSON database offers as as ourselves really helps drive or helps you know create that personalization or allows the enterprise to follow the customer appropriately to where they are. Right, and this survey also, or this uh, 
whole exercise also helps you understand, get the pulse of the market. Absolutely. How does that impact your own products and services? Because that will also lead us to talk about uh, couch-based cloud. But let's, uh, uh, let's talk about how does this influence your own road product roadmap? Well, yeah, the influence to our roadmap is, uh, you know, we, throughout the course of 2020, we have been working on uh, a product, uh, or the 7.0 release of our database. There's some capabilities built into that. The, um, the feature is called scopes and collections, but the, the capability is more important. It allows us to map a relational database into a NoSQL or a JSON-based database much, much more uh, naturally, right? Because we now take on the notion of having a, a schema design uh, you know, of, to the database and collections are akin to tables in a relational structure and documents are akin to records in that table. Um, so the, the mapping is much, much cleaner and therefore allows a SQL developer to recognize what the shape of their new environment might look like as they you know, move and refactor that, uh, that application to become both more flexible, more scalable, and uh, more available in clouds such as both AWS and Azure, as we're gonna talk about in a sec. Right, so yeah, let's talk about uh, couch-based cloud on Azure. Uh, first of all, let's talk about couch-based cloud itself. Talk a bit about it. So Couchbase Cloud itself is a fully managed um, uh, environment of, uh, of, of Couchbase server in the cloud as a database as a service. Uh, the customer simply fires up the what we call the control plane, right, or your, uh, uh, your, your control environment, and then you get to specify what types of um, uh, server instances you want to you want to run, and this is helpful when you want to performance match your application to the infrastructure that you're running in. We run in AWS as well as Microsoft Azure right now, um, and we actually uh, allow customers to support uh, multi-cloud kinds of environments where you know some might be some of it might be hosted in Azure, and then it might be replicated back into uh, AWS for uh, for backup purposes or other geographic considerations, maybe there's a predominance in one particular ge geography for for Azure over um, uh, over AWS, for example. But uh, it's fully managed Couchbase. We drive it for you. So any issue or operational concern you might have about making sure that Couchbase is uh, behaving alive and well, we take care of, and it allows the developer uh, and our customers to go and build out the array of application types that they're often very, very custom doing, those user profile-based applications, catalog-based applications, um, mobile applications that are you know, serving that, that uh, decentralized user community, all of those continue to be you know, uh, uh, the kinds of projects customers are doing. But now it's a much more both affordable and, uh, uh, and, and manageable environment, right? Where you know, it's, it's very, very simple to get going and, uh, uh, and be productive. So it's taking off pretty well, the original a product was released in, in uh, June of 2020. Azure came out in uh, in December, um, and uh, yeah, now we're giving customers that uh, that multi cloud experience that um, allows them to not worry about things like cloud vendor lock in, uh, th those types of things. Yeah, that is really critical uh, vendor lock in. Second piece is as we uh, discussed earlier, also that as companies are moving with their distant on version, uh, a lot of companies uh, today you have to be kind of a, a software company to be. No matter what kind of business you are in, right? You have to be a software company, and uh, without a cloud strategy, it, it's pointless to have a, a so any business today. But if you look at a cloud native landscape, uh, it, it can be intimidating. There are so many decisions to be made. Yes. So, can you also talk about when we do look at you know uh, fully managed cloud, uh, couch based cloud kind of services, because what you are trying to do, and I, I often talk, you know, if you look at, I think of developers as artists, they should not have to worry about the canvas or the paintbrush and all those right. unnecessary. They should focus only on the art, the painting that you're doing. But sometimes we get kind of, they get overwhelmed with all the choices they have to make. So can you also talk about the importance of these kind of solutions where they, they, they use all their time and resources to, to build the business application and not with managing the database. And then we will talk about how couch-based cloud help customers move 
quickly with their digital transformation plans. But let's first talk about the role of these kind of managed services. Sure. So the, you know, the, what's really interesting is, and I love the uh, the artistic analogy because uh, we really, you know, we, I think we, we look at that uh, in the same way. What we try to do with Couchbase, uh, you know, Couchbase Cloud and all of our all of Couchbase's products is give the developer all of those uh, paint colors and palette uh, you know, capabilities that they need and eliminate um, what is really typical is oftentimes they will pick and choose different technologies or different database technologies even um, in order to accomplish what their application wants to do. But Couchbase has the majority of those capabilities built into it. So like I mentioned earlier, it's got the JSON flexibility or the flexibility of JSON for managing a dynamic schema um, you know, from the developer's perspective. It's got full text search built into it so that uh, users who can't type can be just as productive as you know, those who, uh, who, who, who can run a search correctly within the application. It's got an eventing service that handles things like change data capture or uh, imitates the uh, stored procedure capabilities of, uh, of relational technologies. Um, it's got, uh, you know, fully managed uh, uh, when it's running. It uh, also operates as an in-memory key value uh, kind of operation where um, every, all the, everything that we're doing while the database is, is interacting with users is first cached in memory and then written to the database at the pace of whatever backend system happens to be there at the pace that it can accept reads and writes to uh, uh, to its backend system, so it creates a very very high performance environment for uh, uh, for the developer without them having to need to know all of these different interfaces that they typically would you know would need to know. They, my uh, CTO often refers to this as um, instead of running sideline to sideline doing interface work, they're actually able to progress the ball downfield and and make progress on uh, you know in scoring goals kind of thing. Um, that uh, uh, that's one of the big differences of, of uh, uh, the Couchbase philosophy of being this converged technology that includes you know everything I just said plus a whole mobile environment that uh, 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 is available to customers as well. Now let's talk about some of the key benefits uh, of having Couchbase Cloud available on Azure. So you know the core benefit is that flexibility for customers. Right, they can uh, choose the clouds that they prefer. There's a massive amount of uh, uh, you know, Azure being the number two cloud in the uh, uh, in the world. There's a lot of companies who have continued their adoption of Microsoft-based technologies and carried that forward into the cloud. Uh, you know, and 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 said, all right, Azure is going to be my corporate standard. Um, so we help support them. Uh, what's interesting though is when you uh, look, we've we've got customers who are deploying on Azure right now, who have seen, you know, something like a 200% performance improvement over applications they might have deployed in a different, um, you know, a Microsoft-based technology, for example, like Cosmos, and deployed that on Couchbase and then said, wow, you know, the, the, the performance of my application changed overnight when uh, I was able to... Uh, 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 to move the workload into uh, into Couchbase, so there's a price performance benefit, there's that flexibility benefit, and there's the confidence of never losing control over your environment. You're never bound to a cloud provider. You're never arguably bound to a database provider either. Uh, and in both cases, I think that gives companies confidence that even in the cloud, they will still control the you know um, uh, the sovereignty of their data wherever they happen to host it, and that's a really big concern for uh, for large enterprises. Is you know they don't want to lose that uh, that core control over the information that is oftentimes their you know most valuable corporate asset. Can you also talk about if there are different editions or versions of uh, the cloud? Um, well, it's actually uh, that's handled very, very seamlessly within uh, within Couchbase Cloud. We end up upgrading um, all of that, uh, 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 you know, really seamlessly to the customer. Um, versioning you know, the original Couchbase Cloud came out on uh, version six point five of the server in August. We put in uh, uh, six point six completely transparently to the uh, uh, you know to our operating environment. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll begin to roll in capabilities of Couchbase 7 um, this coming summer as it comes out of beta and is now you know, ready for uh, uh, ready for prime time. Are there different editions also, like Developers Pro Edition and Enterprise Edition, something like that? Yeah, there are. What's really interesting about that is it's all the same software infrastructure, um, and the only delta is 
what your service level agreement is with us. So we do have a developer pro kind of edition that is uh, uh, has relaxed SLAs, right? It, that you will will handle your response time in uh, uh, you know four to eight hours kind of thing instead of a one hour response time for production systems. So um, uh, we built the environment so that your customer enjoys all of the same capabilities throughout. But um, you know the the difference is you know what our agreement between our you know ourselves and the customer is to uh, uh, to re, you know for responsiveness to support them. Couchbase, you know, you folks are very very active in the open source communities. So let's talk about uh, what are the open source components of Couchbase Cloud and um, how what kind of access the community has to some of your technologies there. Well, the so Couchbase Cloud itself is designed to be you know fully managed and kind of. Uh, 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 invisible to uh, to the customer, but underpinning it um, is you know, you know Couchbase Enterprise Edition, um, and but that's also managed by uh, a Kubernetes-based uh, environment that includes uh, Prometheus-based monitoring and 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 such as you know some of the other open source tools that, that we're using to create this portable uh, uh, this portable environment, and then there are other a number of other utilities that uh, that we offer. All of our SDKs are open source. So that uh, you know, customer can uh, you know pick and choose there. On for Azure, they can use uh, the .NET environment. For um, you know, if they're in a different environment, they can use Java or Scala or Python or whatever uh, as their SDK there. And then we do provide additional tools like uh, an, an object data mapping tool called Ottoman, for example, is a, is another open source tool that uh, we're building with the community that uh, uh, you know makes JavaScript development much easier. Um, and there's you know any number of other uh, uh, there's about 30 other tools out there that um, integrate with Couchbase and it's uh, 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 and, and you know that are available in GitHub and such that, uh, 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 like I said, are available there. The, you know, there's another utility I just thought of as I was uh, uh, closing out there um, is a utility we're making that uh, allows us to map relational databases like Microsoft SQL Server into Couchbase and demonstrate how easy it is to actually move a relational database into a NoSQL system um, with just a couple of button clicks and uh, you know, a, a, a configuration file to say, all right, read this here, uh, map it into Couchbase, and then you can very, very easily see how your application might, might move ahead um, so that too is a uh, is something we're demonstrating right now um, but uh, yeah look for uh, you know continued investment in uh, uh, and growth in Couchbase Cloud and uh, continued investment in this helping organizations get through this weird pandemic driven kind of uh, uh, IT space and continue to uh, you know to give the best possible user experience to their customers because uh, that's really what you know the, what's driving us as well. Right, and and the the more we democratize these technologies, uh, the better it is. Because sometimes when we look at as I was saying earlier, cloud native computing landscape, yes, they are all open source, but <laughs> to getting started with Kubernetes, oh, good luck with that. That's, so yeah, more... we've been doing that for about five years, so we're pretty good at it now. But right. uh, yes, that's absolutely true. Yeah, Jeff, thank you so much for uh, talking to me today about uh, the Couchbase Cloud and also your survey, which gives us a deeper insight into where the industry is moving. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Yeah, Swap, it was great seeing you again. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, we'll talk again.